Oh boy, I got one big whopping metaphor for you. Is the fact that we have competition a good thing or a bad thing? Hence the metaphor, red oceans and blue oceans. It's used to describe market conditions with regards to competition, okay? So a red market describes a market that has tons of competition and a blue ocean describes one where there's no competition whatsoever. What makes it red? What makes it blue? Well, the fact is that com competitors are sharks in this metaphor. Um, so in the red ocean, there's tons of feeding going on. And in the blue ocean, there's just no activity. So it's kind of a conundrum, right? Because the red ocean has sharks, which is a bad thing, competitors, right? You'd think, but also that means that there are fish. And in this case, this means customers. There's real demand in that market. And in the blue ocean, you just kind of throw up your hands. There's no sharks. There might be fish, we don't know. So the question is, you know, if you have a red ocean, is that a deal breaker? Uh, does that mean that as soon as you get into the market, there's gonna be no profits, the com competition's gonna be way too stiff and you're just gonna get run out of town. And then conversely, uh, if it's a blue market with no competition, why aren't there any competitors? Is it because no one's thought of the idea or is it because there's just no demand for it. So first off, get out of your head the idea that, you know, if you look at how many competitors there are, that tells you something about the attractiveness of your market. It just doesn't. No competitors does not mean there's no demand. And on the flip side, just because there are competitors doesn't mean there isn't a section you can carve out or a way you can differentiate yourself. So how do you make an objective decision? Well, there's three things that we're gonna look for to make our decision. Do the direct competitors compete directly with you? Are they doing the exact same thing as you? Now, a lot of people do this competitive analysis and they find a competitor and they're like, oh my God, they're the same thing as me, I'm screwed. But no, take a break, take a breather, go back to their website and read again. Read as much as you can to make an actual judgment about whether or not they're the same thing. The only thing that matters is whether or not you can differentiate yourself from these competitors. 99% of the time, they're doing something that's similar but different in either the process that they use to deliver the value or the business model or the customer base. There's a lot of different things they could do that are still different than what you're proposing. So the more relevant question to ask is, can you differentiate yourself against them? And trust me, customers can tell the difference between two services. You might think the differentiation is small, but to a customer, it could be night or day. Can you honestly tell the difference between Uber and Lyft? And how many people have you met who are diehard one or the other? How is that even possible? So be honest with yourself. Ask the question, are they really the same? One thing I really suggest doing is go to their website and pretend to be a user. A lot of times, if you pretend to be a user, you can get past that curtain. And once you actually get into the product, you see, no, it's, it's not the same thing. They were just presenting it as the same thing. The second question you need to ask yourself is, what's their velocity? Personally, I think velocity is the most important metric. It just means how fast are they moving? Now, competing with a large company, it can be done. Competing with a small company, it can also be done. It doesn't say anything about the competitor's ability to fight back once you enter the market. The only thing that matters is how quick they're moving. Very hard to compete with a company that has a very high velocity. There's something that I just informally call the pufferfish problem, which it has to do with competitive analysis. How often you'll see a competitor that looks big but in reality, they're not big and oftentimes they're just dead. It happens all the time that we see companies that look big and bad and scary, but because we didn't look at the relative changes in their growth metrics, we didn't notice the fact that they're actually in a free fall. The third thing I want you to ask yourself or look at uh, is the question, how big is their moat? In business, what a moat means is how much have they built up over time that is being used to prevent competitors to enter the market. Basically, if you jumped into the market today and you had to compete with this competitor, how long would it take you before you could even catch up to their basic metrics? Some of these metrics don't really matter, like total user numbers, right? So if they had a million users in the past, that doesn't really matter. It matters how many they're still getting. But things that are hard to overcome would be things like their brand. 
right? How much collective press do they have? If it's big enough that people actually recognize them, that actually is a significant moat. Everything things to look for are, can you single out any large partnerships they've made? If they have large partnerships, it's really hard for you to compete. They are, in a way, kind of cornering you off from entering the market. And lastly, look at the blogs that are referring back to them. In a lot of cases, you'll see a market and there are a collection of 10 to 15 media outlets that are pretty much it for that market. If you're in a situation where your competitor has been featured in every single one of them, that is actually a significant moat, right? Because if you tried to enter the market to use that same strategy, that's pretty much just cut off to you. These are things that make it competitively hard to do anything. So you need to consider these when you make the calculation of, are they a big deal or are they not? I know I said three, but here's a bonus one. One other thing I like to look at is answer the future question the best you can. Can you tell where you think they are going? Are they pushing in a direction away from where you're going? A lot of times people see competitors that are roughly in the same space, but it's very obvious the competitor is trying to leave that space and go into something they consider bigger or more attractive. In that case, take that into consideration. If they're moving out of your market or they're trying to differentiate themselves permanently in a way um, that you're not gonna be using, then it might be the case that they're not something to really to be worried about because they'll be gone very soon. So what's the answer to red ocean or a blue ocean? Well, it's not whether or not you just go for a red ocean blankly or go for a blue ocean blankly. You gotta look for the red ocean with a bunch of scrawny sharks. That's a great market. And similarly, you look for the blue oceans that are very close to the red oceans because that means, hey, maybe you're ahead of the curve and the fish are heading there anyway. 